So a lot of you probably saw the green RV out there. Um, so Ro Road Trip Nation today uh, is a series on PBS stations across the country. It's a few books. Uh, it's an educational curriculum program we're going to talk about. But when people look at Road Trip Nation today, um, they think, oh, it must have started with a business plan or out of a PhD program or, um, I don't know, some master plan like that. But the, the roots of Road Trip Nation are, are really humble. So Brian and uh, my buddy Nathan and I, we weren't in school, I guess it was a long time ago now, 10 years ago. Uh, we, we were in school and um, we were really looking for a lot of that relevancy. You know, we, we weren't very engaged in school. I mean, we, we were going through the motions definitely, you know, doing your homework, uh, doing what you needed to do, clicking the boxes. But at the end of the day, when, we, when it came to school trying to prepare us for what our future was all about, we just felt there was this huge divide between what we were learning in school and what was out there in, in the real world. Um, and at the same time, there's all this pressure. You can probably ask all the, the avid Road Trip Nation students here, there's all this pressure on you to, to figure it out. You know, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do with your future? Um, especially around the holidays, you know, Christmas is coming up, Thanksgiving, you go, always got that ant that's, you know, on your, on your back about it. And, um, and we were really feeling that. And then you, then you look at, at school and you're not getting that exposure as to, well, what's possible? You know, what are the pathways that are even out there for your future? So our idea was, was pretty simple. We thought if we're not getting it in school, why don't we go get it ourselves? And our idea was to take a road trip um, and go out there and uh, interview people in different professions and different pathways and ask them, how do they get to where they are today? Uh, where, where were they were they our age? Where were they when they were 18, 19, 20 years old before they had it figured out? Did they always know what they wanted to do? I think there is this, this notion in, in youth. I know there was this notion in us. When you look at adults, you know, they're dressed in, you know, f fancy clothes or, you know, doctors or uh, lawyers or, you know, oh, they, they must have always had it figured out. You know, they never had to struggle. They never had trials. They never went through a period of ambiguity. And we wanted to sit down with people and ask them, where were you at when you were our age? And what were the lessons and themes that you learned to help you get to where you are today? Um, there was no... PBS series, there was no book deal, there was no, you know, funders or whatnot, um, and so we took this road trip, and uh, since this is a rapid-fire presentation, I'll, I'll skip through a lot of that, but you can just take my word that it was the most incredible educational experience by far uh, in, in our entire life up to that point. So we took that road trip, uh, we interviewed people from all, from every field, every walk of life, meeting with some of you guys today, you know, there, someone from each of your fields, we kind of cold called um, and, and explored and researched on the internet and found interesting people that were out there and asked ourselves questions that we never asked ourselves, like, what are we passionate about? What are we interested in? And we had to research the real world to find people that were living pathways in those fields. And then we had to cold call them up and book the interviews and then figure out what kind of questions in the interview to ask them. Uh, we went through this entire process and then finally the actual trip itself. And as one of the things that we learned was that when you put it out there and you disrupt a little bit or you get, get out of your comfort zone, um, some, sometimes things start to happen that you could have never, never imagined in the first place. So someone that we interviewed uh, knew a writer for Forbes magazine. And so about three months after we got home from that road trip, uh, Forbes decided to do an article on our trip. So that was like probably the first, first place we got a little bit of awareness. The, the, the article in Forbes magazine uh, led to a book deal with Random House. We learned that big New York book publishers often go through magazines to look for different ideas for books. Um, and so we had a, the opportunity the year and a half after that road trip, the road trip was nine years ago, to write the first Road Trip Nation book. Uh, it came out in, uh, in 2003. Um, it was the 15th best-selling book in America at one point on Amazon. We were on the Today Show and Carson Daly Show and CNBC and all that good stuff. And everything started to take off. Um, and around that point, we were doing, we started to do, you know, public speaking engagements uh, on middle schools and high schools and colleges and community colleges. And this was around the time where we had our epiphany for Road Trip Nation that was, even though this, the youth and the students were reading the book, it wasn't really enough. Uh, they didn't want to live vicariously through our road trip. And that they were also in the same shoes, that we weren't the only kids out there in America that are in school feeling this pressure and feeling that there's a lack of opportunities to get out there and explore pathways uh, and opportunities that are out there in the real world. So that's when we started thinking, what if Road Trip Nation could be bigger than just a book? What if it could be this real grassroots organization and movement that gave youth across America the opportunity to get out there and explore the world for themselves? Um, so essentially, we've been building Road Trip Nation over the last eight years. Um, we've put 
many, many uh, youth on the road all over the world to take similar uh, modeled road trips, modeled after our very first trip, where they build their own experiences, research people to interview, cold call them up, conduct those interviews. Um, they've gone to countries like Uganda and Ecuador and across Europe and New Zealand and Argentina and, of course, all, all across America. Um, and they've conducted um, thousands and thousands of uh, video hours of, of, footage, of content and footage from the interviews they conducted with any career professional you can think of that's out there. Um, and then recently, which we're gonna talk about in a second after I play a quick video, uh, we began to realize that even though those experiences were great, um, that road trip mission could have more impact if we modeled a curriculum and a program off of those national and international experiences and could bring that and scale that um, to high school students all across America. And uh, in particular, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, but first we're gonna play a, a quick video here from one of those interviews so you can see what the Road Trip Nation experience is all about. So this in particular interview is uh, with a group of students from San Jose here who uh, interviewed a preservationist in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. I think you have the backup DVD, right? Okay, I could probably walk you through it. I haven't memorized. <laughs> I, he'll, he'll, he'll bring up the DVD. But um, essentially, it started with um, primarily on, on college campuses and community colleges where students apply, would, would apply for this opportunity um, to go on, the, on these road trips, sometimes in green RVs, um, sometimes on bikes, sometimes in their own cars, and they would, they would conduct these, these interviews. Uh, around, around that time, we started to re uh, utilize revolutions that were happening in new media, like cheap video cameras, internet video, to capture and, and, uh, and, and video um, hundreds and hundreds of these interviews with various career professionals from all across the country. And then along the way, we created an annual series on public television to, to showcase these experiences. Um, but then about two years ago, after doing this for roughly six years, doing three books and the, and the PBS series and whatnot, we began to realize that what was, ne you know, what was next for Road Trip Nation? Um, and in particular, an advisor of us uh, forwarded us a report on America's dropout crisis called The Silent Epidemic, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have read this. Um, but the report uh, stated that 30% of all the kids in our country drop out of high school. Um, and in a lot of the major urban centers, it's like half, like LA, which is just north of where we live. And for demographics, African American, Hispanic, Hispanic it's 50% across the board. And, uh, and the study started to, to track why these kids were dropping out of school. Like, they, and they were pulling the kids, asking them, like, why they were dropping out. And they said, well, the number one reason was because school wasn't relevant my, to my future or, like, providing me opportunities to connect with the real world. And that was, that was a major epiphany um, for us at that point two years ago. And because everything that we built Road Trip Nation to at that, at that point was all about giving youth opportunities to get out there. And then we began to realize that one of the major social issues in our country tracks back to that exact same feeling and issue that we built Road Trip Nation on in the first place. And that was when we began to think, whoa, what if this could even be bigger than, you know, a television show and media and whatnot? What if this could actually be a real program that is modeled after those, those national trips and bring this, brings this opportunity um, to thousands of, of people everywhere? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about um, how we did that and how we built that program. But first, we're going to play this first interview here with, with Andrea Lins to give you a sense of um, what kinds of questions the students were asking in the interview, but also what the students in the curriculum go out and do. So, We're getting into Philadelphia. Oh, 76 to the right-hand side. Andrew Lyons is the um, chief conservator at the Philadelphia Art Museum, and he's one of the main conservators in uh, the country. He conserves historical statues from the Liberty Bell to things in City Hall and whatnot, so we're gonna be meeting him in the clock tower in the City Hall. Look at that, that is amazing. That's over hundreds of years old, so much history. And, it's, and we're right here. And I think pretty soon we're gonna be up there. Yeah, Good to finally meet you. Hey, 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 hi, hi, Rose. Hey, so I guess we're going in? You know, I, 
I, I feel like personal with this. Like nobody gets to do this. You're right. You know, and so you're gonna I, be one of maybe 25 people together. Yeah. To get up here. Isn't that cool? <laughs> like that's cool. And, and 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 that's your job, you know. And I think that's just. I think that's amazing. When I was your age, I was thinking of two careers. One was medicine, and one was art. I decided that medicine, my parents would approve of art, no. So I took a job first as an, an orderly. I helped with uh, autopsies and stuff like that. And then I had a bad car accident. I drew, drove a car over a bridge. <laughs> that took a little while to get over. And uh, I, uh, I reconsidered what were the most important things in what order and what would give me the best feeling of having done something with my life that I wanted to do. So I said, well, I really always had loved art, so I spent several years doing art after that. I ran into a professor who was teaching Baroque art. He said, oh, have you ever heard of this profession, conservation? They seem to combine art and science. I said, oh, I better look into that. So I went to New York and talked to several people there, and then uh, I ended up doing that. You've been told to us as being one of the best conservation people in the country, if not the best. Well, I'm, a lot of, I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble now. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that coming from you wanting to, you know, go into the medical profession to please your parents, to doing this, which is, you know, completely different. You know, are you glad that you went down the path that you did instead of going to be a doctor first or, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm glad the more I reflect back on what I've done that I made the choice I I did because this profession, for me, satisfies all the things that I think are important that I have the skills at. No matter what you do, you gotta use as much energy and brain power as you've got to do it as well as you can do it all the time. Because you don't get the seconds back, you don't get the minutes back, you don't get the days back that have gone by. And life's, there's so many things to do. Do them as well as you possibly can. Take, take it take it all out and make it as good as you can. But do it, you know, the things that make you feel like you've spent your time well and that at the end you'll be happy if not proud of your life, you know. That's what I think about more as I get older. You know, the, what are you going to think when you finally have to answer was your life spent well enough? Every time I s that's good. Yeah. So that's just one interview that had been conducted over the last eight years um, by, by thousands and thousands of students. Um, and so what we began to realize is that this enormous archive that we've been building would have great value if we could bring it to kids who don't have the same opportunities for exploration. Um, our first pilot was in the Central Valley in areas like Fresno and the Rossi area, where a lot of those kids um, haven't had a lot of the same opportunities to get out there and, and explore the world. So we were able to design a curriculum. Uh, that brought this huge archive in the world of Road Trip Nation, eight years of this body of work into the classroom, uh, but also create uh, project-based learning experiences that would guide them in building their own road trips, um, in researching people to interview in their own communities, cold calling them up. That was, a big, that was a big lesson video, a big lesson piece. What kinds of questions to ask in the interview? Um, getting that exposure to those real-world pathways, and then finally doing video and media around their projects that they can upload and share with other youth. Um, and so over the last year and a half, we've expanded from that pilot in the Central Valley um, to our big ideas to reach 100,000 students and put them on road trips over the last two years. Uh, we currently have 25,000 students taking road trips across California, Texas, and New York City. Um, in one area in, in the Bronx, in one of our, our, our pilot projects there, a lot of these kids in the Bronx have never been into Manhattan before, and it's a $2.20 minute subway ride. So they, they might not be doing Road Trip Nation to Uganda or across America, but they're doing Road Trip Nation to Manhattan on day road trips and interviewing someone who might be you know, passionate about being creative or design gets to interview an art director, um, sit, in a, sit in an advertising agency, you get a feel for what is that pathway and what is that, what is that world like? Um, 
And then extensions off of that is, I know a lot of you guys are into OER models and whatnot, so we, we partner with the, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation to create an open a road trip nation open educational resource to showcase um, all, of these, all of these student video projects so that people in the educational community can, can leverage off that and, and utilize all of this content. Uh, one of the things that, um, that Marco, the speaker yesterday said that was incredible, was that we don't give our students enough um, platforms and audiences to really applaud them and then there's, there's, you know, there's just the football field and the theater. That was really great. And uh, what we're trying to do as well is, is use our partnerships through public television um, to showcase these experiences as well and really give credit and, and celebrate uh, students' futures. So thank you so much for having us. And uh, we'll be out at the motorhome if you want to learn more. So.